Today I want to talk to you guys about what I wish I had known when I was a beginning artist. I thought I'd get on here and share with you guys what I do know a little bit now about. So let's get started. One of the biggest things that I would have liked my former self to know when I was starting out as an artist is that it's okay to make a mess. It's okay to experiment and actually the more that you do things that are not exactly like you like them to be, the more we learn. This is uh, something that I really had a hard time with. I wanted to do everything perfect right out of the gate and thought I wasn't a good artist because I couldn't do that. I had to learn like all artists do. No one starts out with the perfect ability to draw or paint or any of that kind of stuff. There's practice and just trying new things. And I wanted you guys to know that it's amazing to be able to experiment with all this stuff and just play with all this stuff and realize at first you're just not going to have it looking like you want it. It's, uh, it's so much more fun if we could look at it as playing with art, learning, exploring, and not taking the whole thing so seriously. So that would be the first thing I would have shared with myself back then. Another biggie is to not be looking around and comparing myself with other artists. I was comparing myself with master artists. I was comparing myself with people that have been doing art for a very long time. And because I wasn't as good as them, I really thought that I didn't have any talent, that I was not good enough. And for many, many years I quit doing art because of that. Luckily, I was curious enough about art and didn't have a sense of anything else that was really drawing me in that I kept playing with art, even though it was at times excruciating for me because I wasn't living up to my own expectations. Now I look at other artists and I think it's awesome how amazing people are with their artwork and their creativity. And I see my own creativity changing and blooming and making mistakes and also doing things that are surprising and cool. And there's not that sense of comparison like there used to be. We all have our own unique voice. We all have our own way of saying things with our art and each one is independently awesome and it doesn't have to look like anybody else's art. The more my voice comes through, the less I look like other people's art and that really is our natural style coming through. So when you notice yourself comparing with others, just realize that that's happening and you don't have to do anything with it, but don't pay any attention to it. Just let it go by. It's not meaningful and it's not helpful. So that's another one for you. This is kind of in the same vein as the comparisons and not thinking I'm good enough and all that. And it has to do with really thinking that the art I'm doing, the art I was doing back then, meant something about me. It was really an indication of my worth. And if my artwork was good, then I was good. If my artwork sucked, then there was something wrong with me. So. Looking back now, I can see how much suffering that causes. It's like you're on a constant up and down roller coaster, and there's a sense that you're only as good as whatever artwork you're doing in the moment. And now that I'm seeing that my artwork is not a reflection on who I am, and no artist's work is a reflection on who they are, it's just an easier, more fun, more playful experience making art. Like I've said on other videos, if something really cool happens, that's really, really cool, but it has nothing to do with me. It's happening and I'm astounded like anybody else might be astounded when something really cool happens. And if something really pretty cruddy comes out, that doesn't have anything to do with me either. It's not attached to my well-being. It's not saying anything about who I am as an artist or a person. So that's really lightened the load since I started off as an artist and I hope that's helpful to you too. On a more practical note, knowing that all artists, all people who create visual art as well as other arts, spend a lot of time 
doing their craft. They spent a lot of time practicing. They spent a lot of time drawing, painting, creating videos. And all these things add up to a expertise in whatever it is you're spending a lot of time on. So if I had known this, I sort of knew it when I was younger, but I didn't believe it. I really still thought that I should be better than I was, even without putting in the practice. And if I had known this and really known it, then the whole thing would have been a whole lot more enjoyable. You know, a lot of artists just spend so much time worrying about what their work looks like that they don't even get in there and practice or do stuff to see how growth happens as we create daily or we create more than daily or less than daily each of these times we go to create it's honing our skills so that's been really a wonderful thing to know over time and in hindsight for me sometimes really crappy art comes out of me stuff that i look at and go wow there was a day i would have just freaked out over this if i had created this i would have thought i had to quit and throw out all my art supplies and now i look at it and go wow okay that happened and sometimes i'll do another piece of art immediately sometimes i'll just play with the one i have in photoshop or sometimes i'll just chalk it off to, to a learning experience so note to former self keep showing up keep playing keep drawing keep painting whatever it is for you and realize that every time you come to your creativity it's honing your craft and your artistic skills Another biggie for me was thinking that artists don't look at other people's work. They don't have to look at research. They don't have to see what's going on around them. Art just came from them as if it just blossomed out of nothing. And that was the indication of a real artist. And I really thought this was true back then. So, you know, now I see there's, there's no such thing as someone who is like that. Everyone is always looking at all kinds of things and being influenced by everything they see. So I like to use research as a way of honing what it is that really excites me and brings up that inspiration and that spark. It isn't that I study any one artist in particular. I like to look at a lot of different artists and get a sense of what it is that is an aesthetic that I like and sort of let that inform what I'm doing. But there's always a lot of visual stimulus going on when I'm creating. So this used to be a problem. When I was starting out, I really thought that I wasn't a real artist. I thought that I was just a copy artist or something. Good to know now, wish I'd known then. So let's move on to the next thing. Another thing is, you know, when I was really young, I painted, drew, did artwork around things that really interested me. And of course, I was really in love with horses. So I created horses a lot. I did a lot of horse drawings. And then it was dogs. I did a lot of dog drawings. And then, of course, I came into the cat insanity that I am in now, as well as trying out all kinds of other different animals. And throughout all this, there's a storytelling thing going on. But what I didn't know then that I know now is that I really thought I had to do a certain type of art to be successful, that I had to be very realistic with my art, that I had to be able to represent things perfectly. And I took a lot of classes and did a lot of work around this and got to a point where I was fairly decent at being able to represent things. I could make something pop from a page as if it was three-dimensional. And I never really felt like that was lighting me up or it didn't have a feeling of joy or anything else when I was doing it. So I, over time, started paying attention to what really was interesting to me and what I really wanted to play with. And that made it so I wanted to do more art. It really kept me more interested and wanting to show up more often. In the last few years, I've been doing artwork every day. It's always a new discovery, but it's always around things that interest me. I'm not trying to go for something that I know will sell well. I'm not trying to make it so people like me by doing things I know they want to see. I look at 
my art as a way of just expressing my own joys in life, my own interests. And I think this is really good to know now, and I wish I'd known that then because back then I was so busy trying to fit in, trying to impress people with what I was doing that I kind of railroaded over my natural inclination to do what I did when I was a young kid, and that was horses and animals, and trying to do things that would sell. And yeah, this has been a good one to realize, and I wish I knew that back in the day. So all in all, those are some of the main points I would have liked to have known back when I first started as an artist. I hope that these tips have given you some insight into what I've learned over the years. Maybe they'll help you to bypass some of those snags we tend to get in when we're thinking things should be a certain way. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.